entry of the microorganism into host cells. When the bacteria get into the bloodstream, say from a simple flea bite, the body sends an army of white blood cells to destroy them. But the bacteria outwit the immune system. They get inside the white blood cells, the very cells sent to kill them, and hijack them for their own ends. The bacteria use the white blood cells to hitch a ride to the lymph nodes, the center of the body's defense network. Here they break out and attack the immune system itself, giving the victim little chance of survival. It is this takeover of the immune system that makes the plague so uniquely destructive. And the gene that allows it to happen, the gene O'Brien would be analyzing in the DNA from Eam, is called CCR5. Research in 1996 revealed that some people carry a mutated form of the CCR5 gene. The mutation is called Delta 32, and O'Brien believed it played a key role in providing resistance to the plague. The theory was that a mutation like Delta 32 might block the crucial gateway into the human cells, thereby preventing the plague bacteria from taking root in the body. He hoped to confirm his theory by locating the mutation in the present-day samples from the population of Eam. The villagers were asked to scrape the insides of their cheeks with a swab. The tissue that came off would provide the DNA samples for analysis. This was the first time descendants of plague survivors had been asked to put their genes to the test. EAM is a wonderful opportunity to do it because like a Xerox machine, their gene frequencies have been replicated for several generations without a lot of infusion from outside so that we can look at the descendants of the, of the bubonic plague survivors and simply question whether or not this uh, uh, Delta 32 mutation occurs in a remarkably high frequency. The key to the experiment was that the villagers tested were all direct descendants of those who survived the plague. O'Brien sat down with them to analyze their family trees. Well, we're, what we're curious about is to see whether or not the record of the survivors of the plague has been handed down in your genes. Joan, you trace back here to the Blackwells. This is me here, and my mum and dad. It goes all the way back through the, the Barber family yep. to the Blackwells, right the way through, and Thomas Barber married Hannah Blackwell, up to Robert Blackwell and Ruth Sellers, and right the way back to the survivors of the plague, Francis Blackwell and Margaret Blackwell. For centuries, Margaret Blackwell's recovery was attributed to drinking bacon fat. But was there a more scientific explanation? John Hancock is a direct descendant of Elizabeth Hancock, whose husband and six of her children fell victim to the plague. No explanation has ever been given for why she alone survived. The cheek samples from Eam are sent to University College in London for processing. If there is no mutation present, the experiment will blow O'Brien's theory out of the water. But if Delta 32 shows up, the door will swing open on the possibility that a tiny genetic mistake protected some Europeans from the ravages of the plague. The samples are analyzed by David Goldstein and his team. Let's imagine that in fact the, D the Delta 32 mutation does confer some resistance to the plague. Well, we know that Eam was hit very hard by the plague. If we now have today available descendants of, of, of that population, then if the Delta 32 mutation conferred uh, resistance, some resistance to the plague, then the descendants of this village should be enriched for that mutation because those individuals that had the mutation would be the ones that would have survived. Three weeks after the Eam samples arrive at the lab, the first results are ready. There is no doubt that Delta 32 is present. 
so these are the eam, eam traces that you've got up here and that's 190 so how this works is that we focus in on a particular part of the gene and and here you see an individual with two copies of the delta 32 mutation uh, with two copies. when all the results are in the mutation is seen in 14 percent of the samples that number does not seem particularly high but in genetic terms it is a significant proportion especially when one considers the dilution of the mutation as people moved and mixed over the 350 years since the plague hit Eam. If it is 14% now, it was certainly much higher in the days directly after the plague. O'Brien's hunch had paid off. He had found the mutation he was looking for. But was there a way to prove that the presence of the mutation really was a legacy of the plague survivors? To do so, he had to compare the Eam results with the frequency of the mutation in other areas. O'Brien put together an international team of scientists to map the levels of the mutation around the world. So we began to look more carefully across uh, people of different uh, populations and ethnic groups in Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, and we discovered that the gene frequency was not the same in every place. As the results came in, an extraordinary picture began to emerge. When we looked in Africa, it was totally zero. Native Africans did not have Delta 32 at all, and when we looked at East Asians and Indians, they also were flat zero. The numbers were beginning to add up, and O'Brien sensed he was on to something big. When you get a trail that you pick up, you sniff at it like a bloodhound, and as you get closer and closer, you can almost taste the answer that's coming out. And when we began to unravel the secrets behind Delta 32, we became convinced that there was an answer, and I really wanted to be the person that was there when we find out what happened. Completing his worldwide search for the Delta 32 mutation, O'Brien reached an exciting conclusion. The levels of the gene found at Eam were only matched in other parts of Europe along the roots of the Black Death. And in America, which had to a large extent been populated by the descendants of those who survived the plague in Europe. Mutations like Delta 32 are genetic mistakes that sometimes give people a selective advantage for survival. If that advantage is strong enough, the mutation will become more prevalent as those without it fail to procreate. The high levels of Delta 32 in Europe and America indicate a huge competitive advantage. Well, by now we were absolutely convinced that Delta 32 was extremely unusual, that it had been risen in European ancestors to a very high frequency, very rapidly, and the only explanation that fit all the data was some sort of raging infectious disease outbreak, which could have killed off millions of people throughout the area where this event was taking place. The Black Death was the perfect candidate for just such an outbreak. The geography of the Delta 32 mutation matched the spread of the plague precisely. Now the only missing link was the time at which the mutation first became prevalent in the population. To get a little bit more specific, we wanted to see if we could actually estimate the date in which the Delta 32 mutation actually occurred, or even better, the last time it was the subject of strong selective pressure. If O'Brien and Goldstein could pinpoint the exact date that the mutation erupted in Europe, they could confirm once and for all that the dramatic increase was caused by the plague. So I think we might be able to get an estimate of the age if we look at nearby markers and essentially see the nature of the association between the mutation and variation at nearby sites. I think that'll work. I'm just I'm a little worried about the variance, but on the other hand, that would be that's going to give us some information at the time. Yeah, that's absolutely right. without any DNA from the time of the plague. 
O'Brien and Goldstein were forced to use modern samples as a starting point. The work took months as they examined minute differences between modern individuals' genes and devised a mathematical formula that would allow them to correctly calculate back to the origin of the mutation. Finally, they discovered that the mutation exploded in the European population roughly 700 years ago. Well, I knew it was medieval times, but I'm no historian, so I, I really did have to go and try to look up what was going on 700 years ago and was struck by the candidate which jumped out at me, which of course was the Black Death or bubonic plague. The puzzle was finally coming together. The date was a perfect match with the arrival of the Black Plague in Europe. The mystery of those who survived the outbreak now had a scientific explanation. All the signs indicated that the Delta 32 mutation gave a select few the ability to block the plague bacteria from entering their cells. Those lucky enough to inherit the mutation survived. Those without it were destined to meet a painful and gruesome fate. But there was one further mystery. Some of the Eames survivors seemed completely immune to the plague, while others got ill and then recovered. Could Delta 32 hold the key to this anomaly as well? Our modern understanding of infectious diseases provides a possible explanation. Elizabeth Hancock never contracted the plague, even though she was constantly exposed to infection. One theory is that she was able to completely block the bacteria because she had two copies of the protective mutation, one from each parent. So would people with one copy have only limited resistance?